Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music, and today I want to talk about strumming the piano, strumming the keyboard. Well, complicated piano parts, like the one here for Elton John's Tiny Dancer, can be really off-putting when you look at them for the first time, but the truth is you don't have to read every note. You don't even really have to understand notation. There's one simple trick to getting professional, thick, kind of impressive piano parts to support your pop song. Let's look at it. Well, I had a student in yesterday, and, and she wanted to work on Tiny Dancer, but she really doesn't read music very well. I had the same problem as like a, you know, young high school student piano player. I really didn't like to read all this complicated stuff. But here's the thing. There's a very important tool baked into most sheet music notation. The guitar chords over the top offer us a way in. And even if you just know a chord progression, there's a style of playing that I want to just kind of show you today and we'll talk about it, that will give you an initial powerful approach and then allow you to grow that part into something even thicker, more satisfying, kind of more impressive. So every chord progression has a root, and the chords might have three or four notes. Let's take uh, this chord progression, C. The root is C, and then there's an F. I'm going to just go between these two chords. As it happens, the introduction to Tiny Dancer does that as well. So C, and then the chord. So this chord here, I'm playing it as an octave, and you can see my hands are very spread out. Well, very. I'm using kind of my whole hand. And the left hand, same thing. My hand is playing a low C and a high C. And this is the first technical challenge, but maybe the only technical challenge that you're going to have to face as you try doing this. Now, the C chord here is going to be partnered with an F chord, and I'm just going to go to an F chord that's very handy. You notice my left hand went up, but my right hand went to the nearest F chord. In other words, I used an inversion for the C and a root position for the F. An octave version of the chord, another octave version of the chord. I'm playing four notes. I don't really have to do all four. I could just do three. And the truth is the left hand octave is the thing that gives us the thickness and the richness. C, two, three, four. F, two, three, four, C. This is what I think of as the Phil Collins piano style. And the truth is, once you get a singer doing a melody over the top of this, this is kind of enough. This is strumming the piano. Tiny little adjustments to this technique can yield really powerful results. Something as simple as moving the bass like that can give you kind of all the thickness you need. And all my right hand is doing is keeping a steady pulse. I was playing three note voicings and my left hand was moving. You can see what it looks like on the screen there. Now this isn't rocket science, but it is a little bit hard on the hand. So let's talk about how to train it. The very first thing I think that we should probably do is get used to using a metronome. And I like to use a slow metronome at first maybe doubling up. So here's my 60 beat a minute metronome and I'm gonna go. And as I drop my hand down into the chord, I'm allowing a little accent, kind of every other chord. And that accent helps keep me on the beat. A slight lift and drop every time you play the chord. give you a really nice effect. Here I'm using kind of a slash chord thought, aren't I? My bass is ascending every time, but the chords really aren't changing. C, F 
over D. C over E. It's a thick sound, isn't it? This is the Phil Collins piano approach. And honestly, just between you and me, I think this is what happens um, as pianists like Elton John begin to develop their style. Because this... begins to feel kind of close to the opening of what happens on Tiny Dancer, right? That little melody, a little embellishment on the top. Is kind of a, when you get right down to it, an embellishment of the concept. And I'll, I'll do it slowly so you can see what I mean. Arpeggio up the voicing, sixth, Floyd riff to the F while the left hand. Is what's happening down there. This approach, taking a simple block chord and gradually embellishing it is the direction to go for thickness. I remember really clearly one of my mentors early on, uh, and I was always, always, already a pretty good piano player, uh, sitting down at the piano to play a tune. He was sitting down at the piano to play a tune, and he used this approach. And he got this thick sound out of the keyboard that I wasn't getting because I was using a different approach. I was using sort of the jazz piano player approach. I'd play my C and I'd maybe play a note on the top, you know? And his thick sound of having a bass and then a, a, all the notes of the chord in the right hand and letting it sort of just really sit there on the instrument and really beef out, it gave a great sound to the piano. Now, you'll have to work out what to do with your bass player if you have one. But you may not. A lot of the time, as keyboard players, we're in the situation where we have to fill out everything. Well, the piano can do things that, you know, really no other instrument can. The pedal is your friend. Little arpeggio is your friend. Alternating is your friend. All the time, the left hand anchoring the chord with simple octave roots or slash chord bass notes. Well, I hope this has been useful. Like and subscribe. Ding the bell. You'll be notified when I do my videos, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.